I want you to commit this moment to memory for me. Bioshock is a first-person shooter that subtly blends traditional and unorthodox elements of an RPG into its gameplay. The role-playing components are present in a variety of different forms. Being able to augment your character is made possible not only through plasmids and gene tonics, but also through the use of different ammunition types for your firearms and the ability to upgrade your weapons. However, the most prominent method by which you can define your avatar is by means of a pseudo form of leveling up. This is done with the research camera, which is found at King Pond in the district called Popper's Drop. That thing's a miracle in Technicolor, kid. Works like a movie camera. Start the film rolling before you open fire on a splicer, and then anything you hit him with tells you more about his DNA. Let's give it a dry run, shall we? The functionality of the research camera is pretty straightforward, and much more streamlined than its Bioshock 1 counterpart. The basic idea is that each enemy type in the game is genetically different. This is what allows them to have different physical traits and special abilities. What the research camera supposedly does is analyze enemy on the genetic or mechanical level and reveals how they work so you can exploit their weaknesses. Basically, you use the camera to record your combat with an enemy, and every action you perform grants you points. Once you gain enough points, your research of the enemy levels up, and you gain some sort of a prize. What you get varies from damage upgrades to gameplay enhancements to equipable tonics. Each enemy type has four ascending levels of research. Usually the first and third levels grant additional damage towards that specific enemy type. The second level is some miscellaneous bonus, and the fourth is a rare gene tonic. Though that's the trend, it doesn't mean that those are the only kind of research rewards available though. There are nine different types of enemies in the game. Even though it's in your best interest to fully research them all, certain enemies should be researched first. The reason you need to prioritize your adversaries is because of how some of them more or less disappear later in the game, or become rare. As soon as you pick up the research camera, you should fully max out your analysis of thuggish splicers, who only carry melee weapons, like wrenches and pipes. The reason is that Popper's Drop is the first district where you have the camera, and the last area you see thuggish splicers. Even more critical is how thuggish splicers grant an increased wallet size upon reaching the second level of research. Everyone loves having more money, so why pass up this upgrade? In addition, you gain the scrounger tonic after fully researching thuggish splicers, which allows you to search containers and bodies a second time to possibly find more items. And I open my eyes. Arguably, the second most important splicer to analyze is the brute splicer. Even though you see them more often, their appearances are infrequent. Additionally, the most common time you will encounter them is during mass battles. This makes researching them even more difficult, but no less important. Understanding the Brute Splicer all the way through the fourth level is critical. The primary reason is how the Armored Shell 2 Tonic is the prize for finishing your examination of them. And just so you know, the Armored Shell 2 Tonic grants a large reduction to the damage you take whenever you're being wailed on. Big sister doesn't want you playing with me. Third in line for importance are the big sisters. If you're dependent on plasmids, looking into how these freaky creepy girls tick will be very important to you. They grant increased Eve capacity at levels 1 and 2, and free health restoration from gathering Adam at level 3. Also, the Drill Vampire Tonic is the reward for completing big sister research, which restores health and Eve every single time you hit an enemy with the drill. That's hitting an enemy with the drill. Not actually... uh... drilling them? The importance for priority more or less stops there, since those are the main three enemies that have very limited appearances. The rest of the enemies you can examine at your leisure. However, keep in mind that the further into the game you get, the more important it is to research any new enemies you see. Following the agile big sisters are their polar opposites, the lumbering big daddies. 
If your personal gameplay style is dependent on the guns you carry, fully researching these hulking monsters will be a very desirable thing to do. The primary reason is how the fourth level reward for analyzing big daddies is the arms race gene tonic. The arms race tonic increases the amount of ammunition you find when searching bodies in containers, which will most likely be invaluable to most people in a first person shooter. Of course, if the drill is more your flavor, reaching the second level of research for big daddies grants you increased drill damage. Similar to the arms race tonic is the reward for reaching the second level of analysis for the security category of enemies. Everything from cameras to turrets to those annoying flying bots count as security research subjects. When you reach level 2, machines that drop ammo when destroyed will have double the typical loot. And at level 4, you receive the deadly machines tonic, which increases the damage dealt by friendly machines. Now, being able to find more bullets is all good and well, but it means nothing if you can't carry more ammo. And just by luck, at level 2, the Alpha Series Big Daddies grant an increase to your ammunition carry limit. In addition, at level 4, the award that pops out is the Elemental Storm Tonic. This tonic makes it so you emit either fire, ice, or lightning whenever you're struck by an enemy. Why choose just one element whenever you can have all three? Ah, uh, well, while shooting is what a first-person shooter is all about, we all have to heal sooner or later and staying well stocked on first aid kits is the key to staying in tip-top condition. Spider splicers have a useful ability at level 2 where you can use their organs like first aid kits. One has to wonder just what type of organ is used and how it's applied to function as a first aid kit. But uh, if ripping out splicer organs for your personal gain isn't enough, there's also the Fountain of Youth tonic at level 4. What this prize does is slowly replenish your health and eve whenever you're getting wet. It doesn't matter if you're under a stream of falling water or in a pool, just so long as a substantial amount of water is touching your body. Closing in on the end of the list, there are the common leadhead splicers, found everywhere in Rapture. Reaching level 2 results in a slow security response when you find yourself in a machine's line of sight. However, the real reward is given whenever you reach the fourth level of research and are given the thrifty hacker tonic. With this genetic augmentation in effect, any hacked vending machine will have further reduced prices. The compendium closes with Houdini splicers, who are easier to spot after reaching level 2 analysis. Like usual though, the fourth level of research yields the real reward, and what you get from Houdini splicers is the natural camouflage tonic. Splicing this tonic allows you to totally disappear whenever you stand still, allowing you to indulge in being, well, a total lurker. Using the research camera and more or less leveling up your character in Bioshock 2 isn't necessary, but it should be obvious from everything I just covered that it's definitely beneficial. Whether or not you choose to chase after the research rewards is up to you. However, regardless of your playstyle, without question, it is in your best interest to try and attain at least a select few research upgrades. It is the world for which you strive, you, alone among the dead. <laughs>